Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. improves children's health by developing better treatments and technologies. Ranked one of the top children's hospitals in the nation, we take on the most complex, rare, and life-threatening conditions because all children deserve a healthy future. And with our new pediatric focus research and innovation campus, we are generating and sharing even more discoveries because at Children's National Hospital, we want to help every child grow up stronger. Learn more at childrensnational.org slash innovation. You can have your prescriptions brought to your door with one to two day delivery from your local CVS. Get same day delivery or just swing by and pick them up on the way home from the doctor. While you're here, get your questions answered and put your mind at ease because there are still some things that you just can't get in a cardboard box. That's how Healthier happens together with CVS. Not all prescriptions eligible for delivery. Restrictions apply. Visit cvs.com slash delivery for details. Welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast. I'm Danny Sheriff, your host, certified fertility awareness practitioner, functional nutrition counselor, and founder of the HA Society, and of course, an HA recovery coach who has walked where you currently are walking. This is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. So let's dive in. But last thing, nothing on the show should be taken as medical advice. So please seek the advice of your physician. In today's day and age, we are so connected. We've got email, text message, social media, podcasts, audiobooks, Facebook groups, all of the things. And in my experience working with HAs or honestly anyone on any kind of health journey, addressing the stress that we get from being hyper connected is very important for our recovery. So I'm introducing to you today the digital minimalism challenge it's going to be a 30-day challenge it's going to be for members only but here's why you need to be doing it okay (laughs) i bet that you have thought about this before getting rid of certain social media profiles or putting limits on phone screen time and app usage maybe even listening to too many podcasts or consuming way too much content in general or on a specific topic like HA. And if that is, you know, something that you feel like would open up mental and emotional space for you, then I can't tell you how impactful this is going to be. Giving your brain space from this level of connectivity and your recovery and just switching away from always being on our phones and laptops and always having our earbuds in our ears is crucial it just brings so that just that stuff it brings a lot of comparison a lot of information overload fear of missing out and it really takes away from being able to connect with ourselves and those around us and really makes us miss out on all of these opportunities to learn more about us ourselves and what we really want to be doing without the fear of others people's opinions and expectations impacting them it's a really big one for us, right? Like, oh, how I look matters and being, and social media is going to impact how you think you need to look or what you think your job should be or how many vacations you should be taking, right? Like really think about the, the impact it truly does have on you. And that's a really big one for us, right? We need to not be allowing what other people think dictate what we should be doing with our life. Recovery is is not just a time to restore body weight and get your menstrual cycle back. It's also a time to get your life back. So we're doing this challenge. And for me, making massive changes with my connectivity is really hard. I want to do it so much. I want to switch off so much. And I'm truthfully afraid. So I ran this idea by a bunch of the girls in the HA society. And I was not alone in this fear. So I think a little accountability and teamwork is really going to help us. In a twist of irony, the way to join this challenge is going to be by hopping on the internet and going to dmchallenge.thasociety.com to sign up and get the instructions and accountability that you need. Here's the thing. 
It's not about 100% disconnecting from the internet. It's about finding which areas are not serving you, which ones are cleaning up your life a bit and living a bit more minimalist in our digital lives. So although this challenge is hosted online, you're going to get a lot of space and mental freedom and be surrounded by people and conversations that actually serve you. The challenge begins on Thursday, February 17th. So you're going to want to join now. It goes for 30 days. And because you need to prepare your home and your life for it, you can't just wake up on the 17th and suddenly detach from the internet. It's pretty hard to do. So we're going to spend a few days preparing so that we can go into this challenge successfully and come out feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. So in my experience with clients doing this kind of stuff is extremely beneficial you need it as a part of your recovery. So we hope that you'll join us in this digital minimalism challenge, be able to take some well-needed breaks from the notifications on your phone, from the need to check in on what's happening on the internet and check more in more on what's happening with you. So that's dmchallenge.thasociety.com. Come plug in with us so that you can unplug for the rest of your life. If you want it, if you want it to have that kind of impact. All right, on with the show. Hey, I feel a little bit like I'm a video game live streamer or something with this new angle we have going on. Um, We'll see how it goes, but I'm not a video game streamer. I am here to talk to you about periods, specifically a theme that I have been on going on a little bit about in social media, on my blog, and now bringing it to YouTube and to the podcast, the concept of why did I miss my second recovery period and how once I've got my first period, can I make sure I get my second one? And this is a big topic and it's a pretty important one. So let's dive in. So right now you might be focused on getting your first period and that's great and that's exciting and it really feels like this this conclusive goal, this means to an end, but the truth is it's like the beginning, maybe even the midpoint, depending on the person. But what happens very often is women will get their first period and they'll celebrate. You'll go out for dinner, you'll call your mom, you'll tell your boyfriend, all those things, and it'll be great. But then the reality maybe, or what you at least feel like is the reality starts to set in which is, okay, I did all of the work to get my period back. This means I did all the work to get my period back. I gained weight. I ate more. I didn't exercise very much. It's done. That's been confirmed to me because gaining weight and eating more is how you get your period back. You know this. It's confirmation. You've been doing this. And so those old habits, those old thought processes, they sneak back in and they start telling you, you gained weight. Stop oh, maybe it's time to go back and lose a little bit. And probably a more common thought process that I see is, okay, it was one thing to be gaining weight intentionally and eating more and resting and dialing in my nutrition to get my period back when I had no period. It was very tangible. It was very black and white. It was easy and obvious. But now I do have a period. So, like, why am I, why am I not, why am I, still eating? Why am I still eating as though I'm going to gain weight or resting if I don't need to now? Like, are you sure I need to? It becomes more gray. It's not as black and white. You have a period. So like, you, what are you doing? Now, it's important to just really recognize when that is happening. Okay. Your brain is going to start arguing with you. It's going to start negotiating. Oh, maybe you don't need, you know, that extra like sauce on top or that scoop of peanut butter, or maybe you don't need to, um, eat as soon as you get up in the morning, or maybe you can sneak some coffee in before you have your breakfast, or maybe you can avoid whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? Sorry. Ever since I had my, um, baby and I I have that mum brain thing and I'll be in the middle of a sentence. I will be legit in the middle of a sentence on a podcast, on someone else's show, at work, and the whole thought will just leave. It'll just, it's just gone. It's the most insane thing I've ever experienced. 
but you guys get what I mean. You'll start experiencing these thoughts creep in and they'll confuse you and they'll make you want to make some changes. And more often than not, we'll sort of win the battle by saying, no, I'm, I'm not going to go back to the gym. I'm not going to um, start restricting my food. But maybe I like don't want to put this milk in my coffee. Or maybe I, I do want to take a walk this morning before I have breakfast. And you'll, you'll start just adding these tiny little habits in um, that don't feel like a big deal. And that's the main thing here. It never feels like a big deal. It feels, oh, I've got my period now. My body's probably feeling a lot better. I'm sure it can probably handle it now. But no, this is not true. This is the trap. This is a trap. You definitely need to keep doing what you were doing. That is why your period will go missing. So that brings us to why is my period missing, okay? Typically, you allowed yourself to fall back into old behaviors. Now, whether or not it was because you were having this internal battle that I've just described, or if you just kind of like got comfortable, right? So like so often, we just slip back into the habits that are so ingrained in us. Like it's kind of a lot of work to get up in the morning and cook breakfast. It's kind of a lot of work to get like a full lunch ready and Sometimes we just want to kind of go back to what's easy because we've always done it that way. HA recovery, that was like three months, six months, 12 months of my life. It's a good amount of time for a lot of people to build long lasting habits and it's not that much time. So don't discount the fact that it's very possible that you'll slip back into those old behaviors. So you need to be on top of yourself. So maybe you started to eat a little less and you didn't realize We've, we've been through that now, you know, and I, I see this a lot because I coach a lot of women in HA. I coach them to get their period back and we don't typically stop when they get their first period. We keep working together for the next two at least to make sure that their next period comes. So I can tell you with a great deal of confidence that after that first period comes, that's when they really start to get stressed. They're looking at their, um, f their fertility awareness chart, their cycling chart, and they're looking for signs of problems. <laughs> so more often than not, when we start to talk through it and like, why are you looking for these signs of problems? We find that it's because they feel like they're not going to get their second period back. And when we dive into why do you think you're not going to get your second period, they typically say, well, because... I haven't been eating as much lately. I just, I, I sort of haven't wanted to force myself to eat this much food. I'm having a really hard time justifying it. So I want you to be aware of that one. That's honestly one of the big reasons why your second period might not come. And same with just nutritional diligence, just getting comfortable, just getting a little bit lazy about it. We want you to be ensuring that you're balancing your blood sugar here. Okay. So this is where the, the concept of like going all in is starts to get a little bit gray. I think going all in has been wildly helpful for so many women. Now my battery's about to die, so I'm gonna charge it and we're gonna get back to this conversation soon. The HA Society is taking clients. Coach Ashley and I work one-on-one -on -one with HAers, as we call you, to help you figure out a plan and of course, implement it and stay accountable. Whether you've worked with a health practitioner already and you just want to stay accountable and strategic with the plan that they've laid out for you, or you want to start from scratch looking at all the aspects of your recovery needs and to create a game plan to reach those needs, then we are definitely your girls. When you sign up to work one-on-one -on -one with one of us, we're going to go over your history, your biggest obstacles, ensure that we're taking into account your specific goals and start making a plan to reach them. So those goals could be getting your period back, could be getting pregnant, could be getting back to exercise or sport, or simply working on your mindset around your body image and long-term recovery. We also can teach you the fertility awareness method. So if you want to learn that so that you have the skills you need to go out into the world on your own without fear of getting HA again, we have got your back. So our coaching packages are either weekly or bi-weekly and 
only a month at a time commitment. So you're not paying tons and tons of money for five, six months. It's month to month, which is awesome. It makes perfect sense for period recovery, right? So to learn about other women's experiences working with us and to apply for a coaching spot plus ask any questions that you might have before getting started, just go to thehasociety.com forward slash coaching. Okay, <laughs> we're back. So yes, I think it's been wildly helpful for so, so many people. I Like probably the majority, but there's also that group of us that probably need a slightly more specific protocol. And I'm talking not just eating tons of junk food and binging on all the sugar that sure you're trying to rebuild a relationship with those things you've been restricting those foods for a long time we don't want to be doing that so if that's what you need to do to heal great for long-term recovery for long-term cycle health all in is not the answer and i'm just going to say that point blank all in is not the answer so one of the other reasons you might not get your next cycle or it might be really far away is not because you haven't changed anything. Or it's not because you have changed anything, sorry, but it's because you haven't and you've continued to eat in a way that's like highly processed foods and feeling like this anti-diet culture movement is actually going to save you <laughs> your period. And it's not. We need to be balancing our blood sugar. We need to be pairing carbs, protein, and fat. We need to be looking at quality foods. We need to ensure we're eating enough protein because I'm telling you, that's the number one thing I see in almost every single client that I work with. And if you are not doing these things and you don't get a period, that's going to be one of the first places I look with you. It's like you're eating enough calories, but where are they coming from? How's the quality? Because that's also going to hinder your cycle. So that's something to look at if you feel like you're checking all the boxes and it doesn't make sense um, that your second period is missing. You're eating enough food, right? The quality and the quantity is going to matter because if you pair poor quality nutrients, even if you're eating enough with high stress or with um, beginning to reintroduce exercise, you you can you're still providing stress on the body your body detoxing a lot of the things that you're eating or a lot of the products that you're using because you you can't ignore household cleaners skincare products makeup and the effect that has on you if your body is still trying to pump out those toxins and all that shit <laughs> you know it's a stress as well so I just, I like to look at everything as a whole and I don't like to rule out food quality, even though I know a lot of people um, talk about and the data, the research is in calories. If your second period goes missing and you are eating sufficient calories, I want you to look at quality and I want you to look at habits. And by habits, I mean, are you eating less frequently again? Are you eating only two large meals? habits. Are you drinking more alcohol? Are you drinking more coffee? These are the little things that even if you're eating enough calories could cause your second cycle to be really delayed or go missing. So maybe you got back to training. This is the next one. Maybe you have continued eating. You've even upped your food quality, but you've started training again. This is something that you've changed. Okay. So maybe by now you're realizing, hang on a second. She's just talking about people like basically slipping back into HA type behaviors and they lost their period again. I want to know why my period might, my second period might go missing besides that. Well, the truth is there is no reason for that. Like you changed something. If your second, if you got your first period and your second period doesn't come, you changed something or your nutrition quality is poor or you're having some kind of exposure to some kind of toxin, right? But more often than not, you either stopped eating as much or you started exercising again or some combination of the two. So I want to make it clear that that's entirely likely. It's not anyone's fault. We live in a, in a world where it's really hard to, you know, justify rest and eating more and weight gain. So it makes sense that we would slip back into these behaviors and it makes sense that our second and third period would be harder to get. 
So then the next one, the next reason is that you return to a stressful situation, right? Maybe during recovery, you stopped going to the gym, to be in that gym environment. Or maybe you took time off work or you went on a vacation or you stopped hanging out with certain friends that are triggering. And now that you're re-entering into the cycling world, you're bringing those people or those things or those situations back into your life and poof, your period's gone again. So it's important to look at, look at that as a whole and see like, okay, well, what changed in my lifestyle? If I'm eating enough and it's of sufficient qual quality food and I'm not exercising um, any differently or adding more in, well, what else changed? Work, friends, relationships. Did you re did you introduce products that are causing stress? I honestly, I don't think something as small as that is going to cause your next period to disappear. You're more likely to just see abnormalities like a long follicular phase, missed ovulation, something like that. But it's entirely, um, you know, possible that it can be one of the contrib contributing factors. So those are the main things, right? There's not a specific, like, physiological problem that can just pop up out of nowhere. You are typically doing something to cause your second or third periods to not show up. And those are the main culprits. So I want you to do a self-assessment and look through all of those things. What have you changed? What can you dial back in that you undialed um, from the first time you got your period and make sure that you're on top of it. And I do have a tool for you to use. You can use the period recovery game planner. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. It's a fully printable or fillable PDF. The idea is that it takes you through an assessment for you to look at what did you change in your nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, put together a plan to make sure that you um, are moving in the right direction. It helps you identify things that you wouldn't have identified by just sitting there and staring into space and thinking about it. So download that, um, that guide, fill it out, use it as a tool to get back on track, revisit it every now and then whenever you see an issue with your cycle. I really, I designed it in order for you to revisit it and be able to continue using it every single time you feel like your period is kind of getting off track. Okay. So that's the period recovery game planner. Um, I hope that this was helpful. I know I'm kind of all over the place. I'm a bit of a hot mess. I have another meeting in like five minutes, but yeah, don't stress out. There is nothing physiologically wrong with you. You probably just made some changes or slipped back into old habits, or got a little bit lazy. That's all that's happened. And I want this to be reassuring, not gaslighting. Okay. That's it for me. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a review, a rating. Let me know if this was helpful. I have no idea. <laughs> and I'll see all of you guys next time. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily so if you do that you're doing a service to all of the women you can have your prescriptions brought to your door with one to two day delivery from your local cvs get same day delivery or just swing by and pick them up on the way home from the doctor while you're here get your questions answered and put your mind at ease because there are still some things that you just can't get in a cardboard box that's how healthier happens together with cvs not all prescriptions eligible for delivery. Restrictions apply. Visit cvs.com slash delivery for details.